You remember I said you can make them, you know, big, small, positive, negative. One thing you will notice, if what you want is not just one of them, but both an AM and a GM, you can't make one positive and the other negative. They can't be different signs. Yeah. We know exactly why we drew a diagram and we coloured it. Can you tell me why they can't be different signs? Because they're either always positive, always negative. Good, good. So if they are different signs, right? One positive, one negative, one positive, or, or vice versa, okay? If you're gonna get an AM, no problem. Okay, that means you're at that transition point, <coughs> right? Where the, 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 bless you, the series started, sequence started one way and it transitions to the other. That's fine, okay? But you cannot possibly find a geometric mean, right? At least not with the numbers we know about, okay? Because this alternating thing, this alternating thing, it has to have, like, if I'm going to have a number that pops in in the middle, like, and I've got a negative and a positive, it can't be positive because then I'd have two positives in a row and it can't be negative because then I'd have two negatives in a row. It's not going to work. Okay. So, here's my simple example. Now, I'm going to get you to, um, I hope you've worked out your AM and GM now. Uh, I want you to look at your two numbers. If you have some weirdo numbers like, um, like thirds in there or something like that, I need you to find me a decimal for those because what we're about to do, what we're about to do is we're about to compare these two numbers together, and thirds are famously difficult to compare to each other because you can't, you know, simplify them. So if you got some thirds in there, um, like I almost did, please get me a decimal value. How many decimal places? Uh, just none. Zero is fine. I just want, well, actually, maybe one, depending on the size of your numbers, just so you can tell the numbers apart. Okay. All right, now here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to tell me about the AM, the AM, and the absolute value, or what we call the magnitude, or the size of the GM. I'm just going to, for a moment, forget that Brendan exists, and I'm just interested in the positive case, okay? Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at your AM and GM, and when I prompt you, I want you to all say out loud, which one is bigger, okay? Because you all have different numbers, right? You all have different numbers. Which one is bigger? I'm going to count to three, and you say either AM or GM. Are you ready? Okay, one, two, three. AM? 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 <laughs> Every single one of you? Yeah. But you all picked different numbers, yeah. didn't you? Okay, now, what's going on here? What's going on here? Um, this is kind of the equivalent of if you, um, you know, in like junior school when you're first learning about the angle sum of a triangle and, you know, all-knowing person up the front says, okay, cut out a triangle for me, any triangle you like, different triangles, and then rip it into three pieces so you have the three angles, and then you reassemble it to make something like this. Do you remember these things? And it's like ripped paper, ripped paper, ripped paper, and you put your three angles together and magically they form a straight angle 180 degrees, okay? Now you know why, you know why, if you, if you didn't do that, I'm sorry, you had a deprived childhood, maybe we can, um, <laughs> but we can reenact it now, okay? Um, <laughs> You know why this always happens. And I know why this always happens. Okay? In fact, the AM is always greater than the GM, except for one case. They can be equal. I'll let you have a think. We'll get there in a second. I'll let you think about in what single case the AM and GM can be actually equal to each other. It's a bit weird, but... Yeah. For all intents and purposes, the AM is always bigger than the GM, okay? This is called, this result is called, unimaginably, it is called the AM-GM inequality. Inequalities and proofs regarding inequalities are one of these heart of three unit topics that we will address in, um, well, in next year. Uh, but this is so easy to grasp now, I'm going to show you in two ways that um, it would just be a crime to not show you. Okay. So, I need some more space. Um, would you please draw a circle for me? Whoa. This, um, this circle here, I have drawn a diameter in there. Um, we've been dealing with a, a pair of numbers each time, like an A and a B. And then I want a number in the middle. Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to take this diameter and I'm going to make an A and a B out of it. Now you can pick any point you like to divide up this diameter and if I make a, a circle of arbitrary size I can make A and B as large or as small as I like. Okay? But just for our intents and purposes here, I'm going to put A because um, at least for now it's probably easier conceptually to think of um, 
series that, that get bigger, series that get smaller, sequences that get smaller are, are no different, okay? But if you're thinking about growing, that's kind of a helpful metaphor to have in your head, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide up this number, I'm going to divide it slightly to the left of the center, and I'm going to label each of, wrong color, I'm going to label each of these new intervals that I've got, I'm going to call this one A, and I'm going to call this one B, okay? So here are my two numbers. Here are the, um, the ends or the first and third terms in my sequence. And what I'm interested in is, geometrically, see what I did there? Um, geometrically, what do the AM and GM represent in relation to these things? Okay, what do the AM and GM represent in relation to these two lengths? Now, we're going to start with the AM. The AM is the easiest, okay? I already know what the formula for the AM is. In this context, it's going to be A plus B divided by 2, right? Now, A plus B divided by 2, that length, that length is already on my diagram, is it not? Yeah. What is it? It's a distance, right? It's a distance. It's going to be the radius, right? Um, even though like, that's a point there that divides it up. The intervals are the actual numbers I'm interested in. Okay? So therefore, new color. Okay? The AM is, well, it's any radius on the circle. It's the arithmetic mean, it's the average between A and B. That's where it is, that's what it looks like. Okay? Now, what's interesting, by the way, is that, see, I'm in the circle and I put A and B there. What would happen if I made A uh, really, really tiny and B much bigger in the proportion of the circle? How would that change the AM? Answer, it wouldn't. Because as you make this number smaller, you're making this number bigger. So that midpoint is still going to stay put. It's still going to be in our circle, the radius. Okay. Now the GM. GM is a bit harder to see. I'm going to give you a construction that doesn't look very intuitive. Like, why on earth are you doing that? But it'll come out why. See this, um, this break we've made in the diameter, let's draw a vertical line through there that's, um, that's perpendicular. Okay, vertical line. Now, it's very important that it's vertical, or more importantly, that it's um, a right angle. Because if it's a right angle, I now can use some of my circle properties, and I can know some things about this chord that I've just drawn. Okay? For instance, since this is a line from the center, right, line from the center, and it intersects with the chord at right angles, okay? What does that mean about the relationship between these two intervals here? They're equal, aren't they? Right? Um, there are lots of ways to say this particular property. Um, line from the center perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord, or the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center. It's got like a million converses, right? So we're familiar with this. Okay, now, I want to be able to talk about these lengths, so I'm just going to give it a name briefly. I'm just going to call this x. And this is x because you, you told me they were equal. Now that I have four lengths on here, a, b, x, and x, they're not chords, they're, they're parts of chords, right? We have a name for this, it starts with an i, we don't use it all that frequently. When you divide up, these are called intercepts. It's a bit confusing because we, we use intercepts for other meanings in other contexts. But this is an intercept of this chord, this is another one, this is another one. I've got four of them, okay? What do we know about intercepts? of intersecting chords on a circle. Tell me what you know about them. We know that their products are equal. Wh where do the products come from? If I draw like any pair of lines to make some similar triangles here, okay, I'm gonna get a ratio relationship and then you just cross multiply and you get products, okay? So in this case, I can say x times x, that's the product of the intercepts on this chord, is equal to a times b, that's the product of the intercepts on this chord, right? x squared equals ab. I might as well put the reason for that because not hard and also it'll help us remember when we come back to this later, so where'd that come from, right? Uh, the product of intercepts on, what are these things? They're intersecting chords. Um, those two products, they're going to be identical in value. Okay. Now you can see, he's right there, isn't he? The GM is staring us in the face. Because at least in this diagram, because X is a distance, I'm only going to get one of the GMs. That's okay, no big deal. 
x equals the gm. That's that length there, you see? I don't need to call it x anymore, right? This vertical distance, because it's a chord that's been sliced in half, we call it a semi-chord. Um, just like you have a semicircle, it's a circle that's been sliced in half. And for some reason, someone decided to call spheres that are sliced in half hemispheres. I don't know, whatever, English. Anyway, that there, half a chord, that semi-chord is the geometric mean. Okay? All right, now I wonder if any of you can see why this must be true. Why the AMGM inequality has to be true, because look at the diagram. Is it popping out at you? What do you reckon, Reda? Um, if the, um, the, inter like the part that you bisected the chord in is the, um, the midpoint of the circle, the AM would, the, um, the AM will equal the GM because they're both radius. Okay, so you're getting to you're getting to my next point, which is Oops. where that one case where they're equal. It's fine. We'll revisit it. Okay, Jack, you had your hand up before. Do you want to maybe suggest? Is it because the diameter is the longest line within the circle? So if they're both halves, then there's no way the GM can be bigger than the AM. Nailed it. Can I say that again? Because that's so crucial, and it's we're not used to thinking in these terms, right? But it's a, it's a great thing to notice because it's very profound, right? The AM, its, it's um, value is locked in in this circle. It's the radius. No matter where you put A and where you put B, you're always going to get the radius. Okay? Now, we said that this line here, it has to be perpendicular. right? You can't just draw it any which way. Um, it's perpendicular here. Now, what happens as I move A and B, as I move that point? Um, the GM will get smaller. Right? It can get smaller. It can also get longer, but it has a maximum. right? The longest the GM can possibly be is here if it's also if it is also half of the diameter, the radius, right? Because as soon as we go past there, if we're going this way, the GM starts to get smaller again. Do you see that? Okay. So the GM is strictly always, because it's inside, inside a circle, it's always going to be less than. Now we'll get to Reynard's point, and Jack did mention it as well, for why there is one and one only case where the GM and AM, in fact, are equal to each other. What do I know about A and B, if A M and G M are equal? A is equal to so. It means they're the same number, right? Let me just draw a small one down here, okay? There's my, um, there's my diameter, okay? There's the center, here's the A M, okay? The only possible way I can make the G M the same is if I put that right down the middle, okay? But what does that mean about A and B? A and B are also the radius. So for instance, if you have a series like, oh, I don't know. 10. 10, 10, okay. <laughs> the mean between those two, arithmetically, is 20 divided by 2, which is 10, or geometrically, 10 times 10, which is 100, take the square root, still 10. Not particularly interesting, which is why the most important thing about this is that the AM is pretty much, in all the interesting places, bigger than the GFL. Okay? Are you happy with that? 